that was a promise that I would get my money back if I did these BitCard things. What, what money exactly were they telling you you'd be getting back? The money they took out of my account. How much was that? Well, over a period of time, it was uh, like maybe 40 grand. Okay. I received about 15,000 back. <gasps> Basically, what they did is they scammed you once. And then they're using you to be a money mule for them. So right. uh, my suggestion would be that you file a police report. Mention to the police that you've lost $40,000. $40,000. $40,000. $40,000. It was at this point that I realized that this elderly man had become a mule so he could get his money back. But what I didn't realize at that moment was the back and forth that would go on in my head. Was he a willing participant or was he tricked? I read many of your comments and a ton of you believed he was a willing participant, that he knew what he was doing, that he was not going to file a police report. So I thought to myself, did I just delete evidence of a crime? Did I, by gaining access to this scammer's remote PC account and then promptly removing their access in the hopes that other people wouldn't be victimized, had I just deleted evidence? Internally, I struggled with this thinking, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Keep in mind that I did record everything, including when I took over the scammer's remote PC account, so in case it was needed by law enforcement, I could hand it all over. Some of you right now are like, Deo, what are you even talking about? Well, if you want a little more background into this entire situation, you can check out this video where I remove the scammer's access to victims. But I ended that video by stating that as far as I knew, he still hadn't filed a police report. There are so many things that go on behind the scenes with many of these scam baits that you don't see or hear about. This includes the hard work done by many others in the scam baiting community. I personally want to thank Lacey and Cagney over at Ava. They helped reach out to this elderly man to help him and provide resources for him as a victim of a scam. So thank you ladies for the help. Y'all are treasures with how you reach out to victims. Now shortly after I've posted that video, because he still hadn't filed a police report, I followed up with the police department and here's what they said. Hey, what can we help you with? We have information that this uh, gentleman was, was being scammed. But at the same time, after speaking with him, we found out that he was actually also sending money on behalf of these scammers. We asked him to file a police report with you guys, and we're following up to see if he's actually done that or not. Um, we did make contact with him. The deputy that went out and made contact with him is not working today. They come back in on Wednesday morning. Okay. So you'd have to get with him to get detailed information on how the conversation went, but I do see that contact was made. Yeah, was it just the one time or, or more than once? Because um, I did speak with the detective, and he mentioned to me that uh, when he went, he saw the gentleman and the gentleman said, no, everything's fine. And then when I spoke to the detective to follow up, he said, yeah, I'm going to go back and see him tomorrow. Uh, and this was last week, but I did not hear back. I don't see that we went back out. That's the only just the call one time? that I have at that address. But that does not mean that he didn't go back out. That just means that a call wasn't called out to us. That can go out and do follow ups without... Okay. Making contact with us directly. So knowing that a few days had passed and he still hadn't filed a police report, I started leaning towards being in agreement with many of you in the comments. But there was still a part of me that said, look, it's obvious that he was tricked from the get-go and his part of this is to try to recoup the money that he's lost and the scammers are tricking him some more into getting that money back little by little as they scam other victims. This is not a man that was born and the doctors handed him over to his mother and said, congratulations. It's a money mule. No, he was tricked. So because he hadn't filed a police report yet, I called him back with the intention to gaining the addresses and names of the other mules that the scammers had asked him to send and receive money from. He ended up providing me with seven money mules and their information. Lacey and Cagney were able to reach out and found that one was in a retirement home and someone there was not checking the packages that the residents were receiving or sending. Another said he lost $10,000 in April. He ended up filing a police report and because he felt like he was never gonna get that money back, he was a little unsure if he was gonna fill out the IC3 information for the FBI. Well, since we talked and we fixed up my computer, I called- uh, Lacey? Uh, yes, talked to her today and I just, uh, I have not heard from um, Travis since the last time we talked. 
They've kind of gone silent on our end as well. I haven't um, seen them connect to another victim. I was speaking with Lacey earlier, and she mentioned to me that you still have not filed a police report. Is that right? Yes, I haven't. Okay. No, I haven't. Filed. That is probably the most important thing you should do. I probably can do it Wednesday morning. As far as you receiving money and keeping money and also forwarding money, that is something that you're going to have to kind of figure out with the, the police and uh, explain to them basically how they tricked you into doing that. Okay. I mean, I didn't keep any money. That's the problem. Oh, okay. I was under the impression that you said uh, you'd gotten about 15000 of it back of the 40000 Well, yes, but it was like for expenses. So I don't know. I guess you can count it. I got it back. But What do you mean for uh, expenses? Well, I mean, if I had to travel, he'd give me money for gas and he'd give me money to do whatever I needed. But uh, I, it wasn't really a re return of my original capital that I put into this thing. What do you mean he'd give you money? Like, uh, did you have like an arrangement with him? Where he he'd, words, he, he'd send me a box of say $20,000. And uh, of that 20, he said, well, you can keep a thousand or 1500 for yourself. It's nowhere near what I have invested. I, I went through my, my credit card records too, because I was putting, uh, when I first started, he wanted me to put stuff on a credit card. So I, I, I figured out how much that was. But anyway, it's, as far as getting money back, I don't really care or want any i just uh i mean it'd be great if i could get it but if not i just soon get this thing over and done with anyway <clears throat> yeah i'll i'll go wednesday and, and file a report and give them okay. whatever necessary information they need and, great um, now i know that you mentioned that they'd ask you to keep you know thousand fifteen hundred dollars every time that they send you a package so when you mentioned to me that you'd gotten about fifteen thousand dollars back i'm gonna safely assume that you probably received at least 10 packages is that right uh, probably more than that. Did they have you ship them to the exact same address every time, or was it separate, uh, different addresses every time? Originally, there was four boxes of my money that uh, went to four four different places. I think box had ten thousand I dollars. Mean, I was a panic thing. I had no idea what the hell's going on. I was like yeah, crazy, of course. but it's all I know. I know that you have the records of the postal stuff that you where you sent the money to. Right. Have you got those around? Yeah, I told you they, it was off the <clears throat> on top of the boxes. Uh, do you mind uh, giving me a couple of those names and addresses that you were asked to ship the money to? You want them right now? Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to take them now. Um, I got it out in my garage. I'll go get them. Oh. And that's in Maryland, you said? Yes. She lives in a senior's home, and I guess she was just receiving boxes from people, kind of like what you were doing. And then she was also forwarding them ahead, too. Mm -hmm. I got another one. You need his address? Yeah. While you were receiving these packages, you didn't. You didn't like you didn't question why you were getting these packages or anything like that or he kept saying all right we got to do a couple more of these and it'll be done it'll be a couple more of these and we'll be done and then it just never ended uh, are those all the ones that you received yes and do you, do you have any records of the ones that you sent i really don't know that was like back a, a year ago this past may if i dig i could probably find it someplace but i don't they were all pretty much from the same people did you get a chance to talk to your um your sheriff buddy no, not yet. That's what I'm going to do uh, Wednesday. You know, I, I would suggest like you take maybe you take these packages with you and tell them, say, hey, here's the names and addresses of the people that I received packages from. I mean, I could always go and do it. And if they want, I can bring them almost everything I have. If they want to get involved with turning it over to the FBI or whatever, then uh, do that later. But just, just do the preliminary report first. And unfortunately, because when people become victims of scams or they get someone involved in scams, they're afraid. And uh, and that's a cycle that just never ends. It never ends. It never ends. So these guys feel right now like they're they're, you know, in free range. Like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, just just keep a thousand dollars. It's like nothing to them. Like I said, I'm not really interested. I'm, I, I've lost money before, so it's, it is a big deal, but I, I could just care less. I just like to have this stopped and done and over with. But right. um, yeah. All right. Thank you, Dale. You've been uh, kind of a comforting help. Merry Christmas to you. Hey, Mary, yeah. Merry Christmas to you as well. And have yourself a happy new year. All right. Same to you. When months passed, and he still had not filed a police report. But finally, in February, we learned that a couple of detectives had shown up to his home. Well, yesterday I had the sheriffs come by my house, and um, she had a call from some Minneapolis police department. I told her it was basically a money laundering thing that I got stuck in, I couldn't get out of, and uh, they took some information, and then they left. That's all I heard. 
What did the detective say to you, though? Not a whole lot. They just got uh, they got some information from me, what I was doing, and um, I told them I was getting locked in with this guy. He got into my computer, he got into everything, and and uh, she got a lot of information. And she said, "Did he ever threaten you?" And I said, "Well, he threatened me by saying, you know, I know where you live, I know where your family lives, blah blah blah." That's you know that probably would come up whenever I got really upset and say, you know, I want to get out of this. I don't want to do it anymore. He said, well, like, that's about all. You got a chance to talk to your detective buddy? Oh, yeah. He came by, too. I, I filed a report with him. It wasn't my buddy, but he, they sent over another guy. That was quite, that was like in December, I believe. Okay. Or early January. And I, he took, he made a report. I gave him all my information that I could tell him about. Nothing happened after that. It may have been like three weeks, four weeks. And then uh, these people showed up yesterday, as a matter of fact. All their guns on, everything else. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet that's uh, that's pretty scary. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, you said you you were in contact with Travis? Uh, yeah, I was. And uh, he he changed his number on me. There's no way to be, they can be caught. They used your credit card to buy access to remote PC. On this remote PC account, it would trace back to you. They basically take themselves out of the equation. It, it just goes back to an American. And it puts the American on the hook, not them. And this is what they do. This is how they, they keep a money mule on the hook. Is they'll let you take some of the money that's in those boxes to keep for yourself. And you feel like, okay, well, I'm starting to get some of that money back. So... I'll keep doing this until I get my money back. And yeah, I and, didn't get much that way though. It was basically something to take care of just minor stuff. And we know I get a thousand. He says, "Well, take a keep a thousand for yourself for your gas." And for you, it's easy because all you're doing is receiving a package and then moving it on. And they're giving you a thousand dollars to do that. You're like, "Oh, that's it's just the mentality. Oh, it's just the mentality behind it that 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 how they manipulate people into saying." into keeping them on the hook to do more for them. Oh, you can keep a thousand. You can keep a thousand. You know, you're like, okay, well, I get to keep a thousand. Sounds good. What is actually happening is, you know, laundering the money, or, you know, part of a crime. They're very good at that. That's, um, that's, that's why they do what they do. All right. I thank you for calling. I've tried to reach out recently to see where this whole situation is at. And he has not returned neither mine nor Lacey's calls or messages. This is Lacey Evans. We spoke back in hey, December. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I spoke with Dale. We wanted to know how things were going. The last time he spoke with me, oh. he said you had detectives show up. I did. I gave him a, you know, I told him what was going on and how it happened and everything else. And mm -hmm. I gave him some, uh, I, I, I told some bitcoins for him. She was a female detective and she um, said, she took pictures of him and everything and I haven't heard from anybody since hmm, beginning of the year maybe. Maybe last year even. So you haven't heard from the scammer uh, and yeah. really haven't nope. heard back from detectives since they came and visited you? Not at all. Nothing Great. from anybody. All your financial like information, all of that stuff is good and secure and you're doing I, okay. I changed all my new computer, new everything on there and um, everything is fine. I'm, I'm still short about $50,000, but that's okay. Right, right. They came twice. There was one, one guy who took kind of a, like a mini deposition and what happened and then uh, mm -hmm. the female uh, detective, she came later and she we, we went through a bunch of stuff of what I did and what I did and why. She said, why'd you do this? I said, well, uh, this guy had the dresses of my my daughter and my brother, and he says, if you don't do this, I can blah, blah, blah. You could, you know, ruin them. And I, right. so that's when we stayed. But when, uh, after Dale came in, Dale and I, I guess we spent about an hour and a half, two hours going through my computer, eliminating a lot of stuff, blocking everything that he could do. And, um, and so <clears throat> it's all I know and everything is fine now. I'm so glad to talk to you. We were wondering how you were doing. I'm glad everything is okay. And well, worked out. If, if you get a chance, tell Dale everything is fine. I will. Uh, I have some uh, relatives here that just don't want to know anything about what was going on. Right. So that's one reason I didn't come back, but uh, they're okay. all doing something. So anyway. Super. Yes, we wish you dear. well. You guys are very helpful, and I hope nobody else falls into this trap. But um, Yeah, unfortunately, they anyway. do every day. Every day. Yeah. Okay, my dear, right. thank you for calling. Being a victim of a scam is a very difficult thing. And we know that not every victim reports that they've been scammed because of shame or guilt. 
And although it took him months to finally file a police report, I do believe that he was a victim first. And ultimately, that's who I feel I've been called to protect. Some of these situations can really, really make you second guess if what you're doing is right or good for the greater good. I can honestly tell you that I feel that I did the right thing in removing those scammers access to so many victims and reaching out to law enforcement just in case the victim hadn't, I felt was also my duty to do. Being a victim of a scam is already a hard enough experience and if we can lessen someone's burden then as I always say, let's do this. Thank you so much for watching, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like on the video and share it with those who you feel need to see this. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.